All right, what's up, guys? We are back with another podcast episode. I am your host, Chris Olson, and this is my co-host, Pickleball Will, or Will Chang, whichever you want to call him. <laughs> you and, can call uh, me. You can call me the Willinator from now until the end of the month. That is all. Don't. That's a band word on this podcast. That's a band. <laughs> that's a band word on this podcast. We don't. We don't talk about that paddle. Do we? Do we still have the meme that we shot back in? You need. You need to flash Isaac. Go flash that up. Now, when we when see. we get to that part of the pod, <laughs> we'll we'll flash that up for sure. Okay. All, right. Uh, All right. Okay. Well, before we get into everything, how was your week, Will? You do anything fun? Uh, I've been yeah. It's it's been fun. It's been lively here in Tulsa. We had something called Mayfest, and it was just really lively downtown. A lot of live music, um, a lot of art shows, exhibits, uh, just local people displaying their art, selling their art, jamming out. So it's been. A good time. I've been doing a lot of uh, biking, like in and out of uh, the city. The weather's been really nice. Some pickleball here and there, um, and then I mean, the rest of it is just uh, same old, same old. You know. How how, much, how often are you playing? Like, how many times a week are you playing pickleball these days? <sighs> maybe. Well, last week was a lot. Uh, maybe like four times, just because there were so many paddles. Like I had to yeah. hit like a bunch just to. And, and it wasn't like enough to, you know, gather all my thoughts, but just a couple of play sessions, just so I have somewhat of a feel of things. So I was hitting, you know, the Hugh Def again, the J2K, and then comparing to old paddles, like the, uh, the Ruby, the Azul, like, and then, you know, and I'm trying to hit these because more stuff is coming along the ways that you've already had, like the paddle techs, which I have come in in the mail and I'm just like, okay, if I don't hit some of these now and kind of solidify or reaffirm some of the thoughts I have about them, once new things come, I'm going to be like, oh, I'm going to have to hit all of them all at once, you know? Yep. And it takes me a little bit longer to kind of assess a paddle. I know for you, like, I know you like to take your time, but sometimes I feel like you can hit one or two sessions and you kind of have a good feel. Um, yeah. But me, it takes me it takes me like at least like three to like, I want to say five play sessions, good play sessions, you know? I'm almost surprised because I feel like I would have thought you would be like quicker than me. Oh, really? Because mm. I feel like I just overthink it a lot or like I like to think that there's more for me to discover when maybe there isn't. And with your personality being more laid back, I figured you'd be like, Psh. One game, I already know how I'd review this thing. <laughs> okay, I mean, like, I, I do, but also at the same time, I, because I know I'm like that, I'm like, okay, I should give it more time because I'm also Fair. pretty quick to judge. And I know it's happened to me before where people say, dude, Will, what are you talking about? It doesn't play like that. And I'm like, what, are you sure? I'm pretty sure it does. And then I hit it again. I'm like, okay, maybe there is a little more nuance here that I need to, you know, check out, right? So it's, it's only because of that, just because I know I can be quick with it so i'm like okay i should take my sure. time it should be more robust with it that's all yeah understandable understandable mm -hmm. nice well that's fun well let's get into it uh i think this episode this week will you know i say we say this all the time but i think this one yeah. might actually be a little quicker because there wasn't too much <laughs> start it's kind the timer. of just a <laughs> yeah start the timer <laughs> it's uh just kind of a mismatch of a bunch of random stuff so we'll just dive into it uh first let's thing go. i wanted to talk about was uh, I was drilling with a friend this week and I really wanted to work on my two-handed backhand dink because I like using a two-handed backhand for mm -hmm. drives, but I've never been, and I like it for speed ups, but I don't use it enough for dinking to really uh, deceive someone. Like if right now, if I put two hands on the paddle at the kitchen, you know no, I'm going to speed, speed up. it up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I was like, I need to fix that. So I... I went and watched uh, James Ignatowicz dink, and I've always thought his looked really funny, but I was like, well, obviously he has a good one, so I, I'll yeah, just go check it out. Yeah, he squats down. It looks like he's uh, in like a horse stance, like he's about to, you know, do some martial arts, and then he just so, like, whips it, rolls it over with his shoulder. It's really funny. I mean, that's like the best way to describe it. So I watched him. He squats really low, and his paddle head does not drop at all. Like, it's almost pointed up, or it's very, uh, like parallel with the ground honestly i think it is more pointed up than it is parallel and then he just takes his arm up basically with his shoulder and i was like okay i i personally i think it looks really ugly but i was like i'm gonna give it a shot and i'll put i actually filmed this drill session so i'll pop some clips on screen dude 
that session immediately it clicked. I was like, it's going to take more work to feel confident using it in a match. But I was like, wow, this feels infinitely better than what I was doing. Like it's more consistent where the ball goes. Mm -hmm. I get more top spin. There's less errors. So I was like, dang, that was easy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cause we're always told to leave the paddle head facing down. Yeah. Right? So you can kind of flick it and you get more action rotation with the wrist. Yeah. But the way James does it, you're right. He kind of, I mean, I kind of do it too on my forehand side, but like, yeah, we scoop it over. <laughs> like, and, and I and think what's nice about body. it is there's just less moving parts. So there's not much to mess up. Yeah. The only caveat with that technique, I think, is that you have to really know your paddle and your paddle has to have like consistent like grit, I feel like, or like mm. it has to be consistent from time. If you, I've known, I have you know, mess around with that technique before. And I noticed that once my paddle starts to lose a little bit of grit and you need that kind of quick motion to do the roll because you need more spin, right? And, yep. if, and you need to like just kind of kiss the ball a little bit. And if you don't have good enough grit or you're not used to, you know, the grit on your paddle, then that's where, I don't know, things can get wonky and things can kind of mess up. But yeah. sure, sure. I, I will say the other thing too is you definitely have to use your legs way more just with how deep you have to squat because since you can't drop your paddle head below the ball, you have to drop the paddle by dropping your legs. Yes, dropping your legs and like dropping your shoulders, right? And for James, he has to drop it even more. Like I know, because so he's so tall. Exactly. He's, yeah, he, he got to drop it like it's hot. Yeah. It. So give it a shot if you guys are trying to add it to in a backhand. I, again, I don't think it necessarily looks super nice, but it was effective and probably how I will do it from here on out unless I discover something else that I think is better. So yeah, he, he has probably one of the better ones uh, that I've seen, at least like seen up close. Um, there's a few other people that I kind of like their backhand roll dings to. Um, it's really just watch the tall people because the tall people, I think they have to have, they have to get low, right? Cause they're taller. So, you know, their technique has to be more sound. I feel like, but yeah, for sure. For sure. Uh, next thing this week, so actually it was just yesterday. I was what? playing some lefty pickleball with some friends. Like we just do this every now and then because we think it's fun. I, I, mm -hmm. Actually, have you played much like four people playing left-handed outside of like when we did it in Vegas? Hmm. No, to be quite honest, not really. Like when all four people are playing, no. There are matches where. I just play left-handed just for the heck of it and nobody else is. Um, really, like, sidetrack just a second. I've been joking around with some of my friends that I'm going to start a new duper account. And that duper account is going to be an alter ego of me who plays left-handed. His name will be, like, Billy Chung or something like that. And I'm going to play completely left-handed. And I'm, I'm, can you just imagine the thumbnail title now? I entered a 3-5 tournament with my left hand here's how it went let me know if first you guys of think all, that's a good idea i think it i think it should be <laughs> what i think it should be wickle ball pill is what the <laughs> name should be no, okay i like it but what's really funny that you say that is me yeah. and one of my friends i played with last night legitimately yeah. were like we should sign up for a local tournament and yeah, play yeah, yeah. it left-handed in yeah, three yeah. five yes no that'd be hilarious Okay, people in the comments should let us know because I, I'm genuinely curious. I don't know how people would respond to this. So we probably are, I'd say we're probably square in 3-5 with our left hand. Maybe a little bit worse with certain shots that we're not comfortable with yet. Yeah. But if you had people who were right around the 5-0 mark play mm -hmm. in a 3-5 division, but they're left-handed and genuinely that's around the skill level they are left-handed would you be upset if they're in your bracket like i don't know if if there are five o's if they're legitimate five o's and they're playing left-handed in your bracket in three five hmm I but, actually but think their I, skill I level left-handed is three five. Oh, their skill level left-handed is three five no i wouldn't be upset that's kind of how i feel but i was just thinking about this and i was like i could see where like i don't think we would win ne like yeah, i mean maybe no. but i don't think we would but I think I honestly I think it would be super fun to do. I, I don't think we you would win because if you think about it, there's going to be some four O's because when you get to the final semis or whatever, you're playing against some four O's potentially higher than that. And so unless you think you can win four O, you're probably not going to win in the three five. And I mean, there's only one way to find out to see if people get pissed off or not, and that is to do what you were going to do, which you should do. 
I'm, I'm all for it. I'm definitely thinking about it. If if my friend is serious about it, I would I would definitely do it with her. I think it would be it would just be so funny. Okay, okay. Speaking of that too, did we should you do see one the, together? Did you see the clip I posted on Instagram from us playing left handed? Yes, when you were playing with was it you playing with the Shogun? You got nailed. <laughs> yeah, I got yeah. nailed in the face. You got nailed. Yeah, typical. I'm just kidding. <laughs> so, so here's the thing that's funny about this. What? So it was getting darker. It was probably 7 p.m. Just It was just at that height of the sun where you're like, is it worth it to keep wearing sunglasses? Like it's dark, uh. but it's not too dark. And so I was like, I think I'm going to take these off. And then I was like, nah, just keep them on. I was like, it's not that bad. And then within a couple first points in that game, just... Bam, she clocks a lefty forehand, like speed up out of the air. And when you are left-handed, I don't know if you've experienced this much, but like blocking and yes. moving with your feet, everything feels backwards. So it's like, I didn't, in that moment, I froze and I didn't know how to move. Mm -hmm. So I just stood there and got nailed You just stood there and you took the it. Yes. No, I just feel like, I just feel awkward. I feel slower and, and that's all. Like, I'm like, I have to remember, I have to like, like think i'm like oh okay i need to move my left foot here and my right foot here you know first you know to get the position that i want to do this left-handed backhand or whatever shot i want to do whereas obviously when i'm right-handed that's second nature yep totally so i i will say i'm very glad i did not <coughs> take okay. my sunglasses off and they were the sunglasses were totally fine they're just the pair of oakley's that i wear all the time or whatever but mm -hmm. i it would it literally it was if those weren't on that was a direct hit to my left eye and i'm like oof yeah, yeah that would have been I, bad i did get hit um last time that i played in the eye as well with no um no protective eyewear oh and, ouch well it was it's it was i was resetting i was digging a ball and the ball came off of my came frame up. and yep. it came up and it hit me so it wasn't that bad but also i was like oh snap i was a little dazed and yeah. i was like crap I need to wear these now. And I did just recently get a pair of like protective eyewear that is just clear. Like usually when yep. I'm outside, like I wear glass, but when I go indoor, I'm like, okay, I don't need it. I'm like, oh, yep. that's fine. But I just got one that's just like clear, no prescription or anything that I can just what did you get? plop on. Um, uh, uh, actually, I think somebody sent it to me. I don't remember. I just, sure. <laughs> it's clear. I didn't, I didn't purchase them. This was sent to me. So gotcha. I was like, whatever. But it, they look like regular sunglasses. They just have to have clear for, um, lenses in them. So yeah. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. I, uh, yeah, very thankful. It only reinforces to me why I should just always be wearing these because yes. it's funny. Lefty is where I thought I would need it the least, but I'm probably wrong. I probably needed it more, more playing lefty because yeah. people have worse aim. Right. And then you also have worse blocking. Yes. Right? Worse like blocking less and reaction. All right. Just to matter. All right. Let's take it a step further. You play lefty. Right, everybody plays lefty now. How about you and your friend groups? Everybody plays lefty, but with trainer paddles. How about that? Oh, dude, that would be so hard. We're already not that great with our left hand. Like, <laughs> it, would it would just be. It would be even funnier. Come on, you should. Do Maybe it. I'll try it, it with them and just see where it goes. Yeah, boy. That would be funny. <laughs> All right. Anyways, uh, we have a really funny story we have yeah. to tell. So. There, I'm going to leave the company nameless because I don't even want to give them the credit for this because now I'm, I'm almost just more annoyed. Oh, okay, okay. So, a company emails me sometime last year, anywhere between eight months to a year ago, and they're like, "Hey, we want you to review these paddles." And I saw the paddle, and I was like, "I have literally seen that paddle on Alibaba. I have a friend here that has a prototype of that paddle." Mm -hmm. That paddle's not anything special, but I was like, you can send it to me if you want, but just know that it will probably never get reviewed. And then, you know, they followed up a couple times and I was like, no one's asking me to review this. Like, it doesn't make sense for me to review this paddle. I mm -hmm. review what my audience wants to see. Ever since I sent that email, I yeah. will get emails periodically once a month, every other month, probably about once a month that say, hey, are you going to review so-and-so's paddle? <laughs> and I was like, There's no one them. <laughs> no one knows who this brand is. Like, I've literally never heard someone mention this brand outside of these emails. And I was immediately mm -hmm. like, this has mm. got to be the brand. Fishy. For Fishy. sure. And yeah. so the emails kept coming through, and I just kept giving the same answer. And I was like, okay, whatever. And then this week, 
I got another one. And I was like, okay, whatever. Usual rigmarole. Responded, archive. And then Brayden texts all of us and he's like, hey, do you guys ever like get emails about reviewing a paddle <laughs> that you think is actually from the paddle company themselves? And I was like, yes. I was like, I was like, I just got one this morning. Who was yours from? And they say the paddle company name and it was the same one. And then John's like, wait, I get that same email. And then I was like, wait, did we all get one this morning? You and both. we did. You did. And then, Dwight Carver and Coffee. I need to check my emails now to see if I got one too. If I didn't, dang, I'm not important You're going to feel left out? <laughs> no, actually, I'm, I'm, probably, I'm probably glad that I didn't get emailed. <laughs> but it was so funny. And then I was like, okay, guys, let's go through the emails. And I was like, did this name email you? And oh, you like all of the names it? were the same. <laughs> but sometimes, sometimes they were smart. Well, yeah. I, smart, I don't, whatever. They would just change the last name, but the first name would be the same. Oh, <laughs> was, my gosh. Okay. So well. after this, I was like even more annoyed that like they're trying to do this like sneaky because uh -huh. I said, I'll re like, you know, I try and review what people, people ask about. Him. And I'm like, that's yeah. just dirty. That's so funny that it happened to all you guys and Braden brought it up. Speaking of Braden, did you watch his last pod episode when, about his, uh, his collab with Volaire? Uh, yeah, someone should have told me I was gonna need a box of Kleenexes Bro, before I watched that. Yo, I, I, I dang near cry. I actually did cry. I was on my way to play pickleball. Yeah. And when I got, to, yeah, and and when I got to the place, I was still still like red eyed and teared up. And then I came in, and then my buddies were like, "Will, we haven't bagged you yet. Why are you crying? You haven't lost yet. You're about to though." But okay. And I was Dude, like, Dude, I literally had just woke up that day, and I was like, "Oh, you know, while I'm making breakfast or whatever, I'll turn on yeah. this podcast." So I'm like half awake and i started yeah. getting to the story and i was like yeah it's too early in the day <laughs> for this i was like <laughs> i was not ready for those of you guys who don't know go go listen to Braden's podcast basically he has a collab with um volair and the proceeds from the sale of that paddle it's i believe it's just a mock a forza mock 2 which is yep. Braden's paddle of a choice he they should just call it the mock 3 because in Braden's hands it's essentially the Mach 3 because he's so fast with it. Anyways, and the proceeds for that goes to a, um, I guess, a foundation that his parents uh, founded, that his family founded um, to help support, um, I guess, uh, like a cancer patients because his younger brother um, had passed away from cancer. And yeah, no, it's a great cause. And I cried because like that story hit me a little bit on a personal level because I have I had a younger cousin who not too long ago passed away from cancer. So he was like twenty something, and he did not drink, did not smoke. But then he got like cancer, like like I don't know, in his mouth or in his throat or something. They had to amputate his tongue. He couldn't talk, and it hit me even harder because literally like the week before, I called my parents. I called my dad. Uh, oh, I called my mom, and my dad picked up the phone and. Me and my dad, we have a good relationship, but we don't talk that much like that. But we're like, oh, yeah, catching up. And then we hang up. And then literally he calls me 10 minutes later just to tell me that, hey, I'm playing pickleball with Uncle Lim and Uncle Kenny. And I'm like, oh, word. Like, that was it. Just to tell me that he's playing pickleball. Like, and I thought it was kind of like the cutest thing. But it, basically my cousin, his dad is one of my, my Uncle Kenny's who's my, who my dad is playing pickleball with. So, like, it just kind of hit me. And I just imagine, like, if he was still here we would be playing pickleball like all together and uh my cousin who passed away he is the biggest trash talker and i just know like it would have been hilarious so yeah no when brain when brain was telling that story i was crying dude i i almost had to pull on this up on the side of the road to stop it was no i mean it, yeah it was a tearjerker i mean even just you know his response while telling the story it was like you know you could tell it meant a lot to him and i i just think the concept of how all of it was done was was really well like doing it for a um doing it for that foundation for like having the mm -hmm. proceeds go there because i think you know i think probably all of us have been approached about a collab at some point you know I, whether serious or joking and like my stance has always been that would be really cool but i think people would there's no way anyone would think i'm not biased if i did it and then now there's money incentives so i think the way brayden did it where the money's being donated to a charity and like a good cause was was really smart and just like it's good and the paddle yeah, looks yeah. great like yeah guys should good check job, it Braden. out 
Good job for yeah. making me look like a dick. Shoot. I'm over <laughs> yeah <laughs> just so, kidding, i'm just kidding watch, watch the episode for sure it was uh yeah it's yeah or don't watch a nice it paddle. if you if you don't want to cry yes. anyways <laughs> anyways we gotta, we, we gotta keep going i'm about to tear up let's go yeah let's let's not so anyways that one company pretty funny story with them i i wouldn't be surprised if other companies have tried this but this company is the most persistent and mm-hmm. i'm like man just if you put that amount of effort into making a good paddle, like the review yeah. might happen, but instead you're like, or I don't know, into marketing, like actual marketing instead of I don't know trying to get a review. I don't I don't even know because like even if you get the review, right? If you don't have kind of like the marketing behind it, at least something, I feel like the reviews don't really mean anything. I, I mean unless. I mean, I guess, I guess the reviews are kind of marketing in itself. Like if they got you and Brayden and John and like me and whoever else to actually review it, that can be marketing in itself. But still, it's like you still need something more than just that. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, 100%. Yeah. yeah. All right. Anyways, moving on. Uh, so we've been talking about the core crushing and all these paddles being super hot. And yes. uh, this had been rumored for a while, but I hadn't talked about it because nothing had been confirmed to me but it's pretty well confirmed now that usap is going to be hosting a meeting on may 20th to announce some new testing with manufacturers they invited manufacturers out to come to this meeting and see what everything is and it sounds like all of it is related to exit velocity testing and uh, identifying you know these power paddles i'm very curious what comes of this is it a full-on ban highly highly doubt that is it Hey, when you sell out of this batch, you're done. Do you have till the end of the year? Like, all I, I just hope that we actually get somewhere for once instead of like just oh. dog t- chasing its tail. You know what I mean? Mm hmm. Uh, yeah, I don't think it's, I, I don't know if they're going to get anywhere, to be quite honest. I, like, to get, I don't know who's going to the meeting and what companies are, but for, I just don't see them all agreeing to, I don't know one thing, especially if one of those paddles is a big money maker for them, right? Like I'm like, uh, and there's just so many different interests involved. I just well, I don't even know if that. I don't think they're inviting the companies as like a hey, let's vote and agree on this. Okay. The way that I understood it was, we are inviting you to show you what the new test is, uh, so you can learn about it. <clears throat> is how I interpreted what okay, I heard so, so far. Okay, so they're gonna do this new testing regardless, and then yeah. they're trying to be transparent with the yeah. companies that's what okay, it seems well, like that's a good start i guess let's but, hope it goes somewhere because okay nothing has meant anything in the last year it feels like yes i agree uh what does that mean for older paddles then are they grandfathered in like that's what that's the million dollar question like does a gearbox does a yola do those get grandfathered in do you have a certain amount of sell-off date like how do you handle that and not upset people, right? Yeah. But then also if they're grandfathered in, I just, and future iterations are banned. I just imagine those banned yeah. ones that are grandfathered in are just going to be a hot commodity. they like, oh yeah, let me get that. It's a, yeah. like, you know, you can't get that kind of power anymore. So right. you can hoard all your Gen 3s. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, yeah, seriously. I, I don't know curious how they handle it but i hope it goes somewhere because it's been a topic that is running rampant and i think now more than ever is a time to make a good announcement about what the heck the sport is gonna do yeah sounds good okay okay all right next up we have the shogun talking about the shogun from bread and butter you got yours i got mine in well yesterday but i didn't open it up until like today because i came back really late uh you've played with it Clearly, I mean, from the video that you posted, where you get clocked in the face. <laughs> what, yeah. do you, what do you think of it? I So I was not really that pumped for it. I mean, from like, you what? know, bread and butter always. Well, here's the thing. They always do an amazing job with the marketing, their designs. Everything is great. We're going to touch But I was just like, that. okay, don't know much about what the heck this titanium carbon fiber weave is going to be. Is that anything special? Is it a gimmick? blah, blah, blah. So I was just kind of like, we'll see. 
but I wasn't going in like, oh my gosh, I'm in, I'm ready to be blown away. But I got it, took it out for a evening, and I actually really liked it. Like it, oh. the loco never really impressed me. It's not a bad yeah, the, paddle, but yeah. I was like, eh, like yeah, loco's running. It's the just f fine, yeah. But this, mm -hmm. it's almost kind of like the shape shifter to me in that it Ooh, doesn't do paddle. any one thing super amazing. Like it's not a super power paddle. It's not a super control paddle, but it just kind of has everything the that you package. want. Yeah. Yeah. It the feel off the face is kind of springy, but it's not like poppy where you're like, oh, I can't control this thing. Like I never felt, oh man, it's like too hard to use for this. And now granted, okay. I'm coming from a lot of power paddles right now. So almost anything is easier. Yeah. But even at the net, I was like, I still have good power. Good. Like I'm not going, oh man, like I can't put Does a ball away with this. Feel like any other paddle right now that you kind of put, was it close to? It, I don't know what I would put it similar to, to be honest. It's not oh. so different that it's like, oh my gosh, there's nothing it compares to, but there's nothing off the top of my head that I can think to put it against. Okay, does it feel dense or does it feel hollow? Like middle of the road? Like if dense is over here and hollow's over here, it's like <sighs> somewhere in the middle. Okay. Right. But it's, I mean, there was just nothing I had to complain about. I feel like normally if I'm using some paddles, it's like, eh, I don't mm -hmm. really love this. But by the end of the session, here's usually how you know it's a good sign. By the end of the session, I was like, I want to hit this more. Yes. And I wasn't okay. like, okay, I've gotten everything I need. Like, let's go put it on the shelf. Because that happens yeah. to a lot of paddles. Yep. So yep. I'm looking forward to spending more time with it. I, And I think it's what makes it especially nice well, maybe not especially nice, but it performs well, but it also just looks so different from everything on the market yeah. that it's like an added bonus when it's not just black. Yes, I agree. Um, that's why I like the Kevlar stuff. So I'm super excited to try it. I think when you when you look at it up like really close and you see that little bit of red in yeah. there, it yep. looks sick. And the also, weave pattern looks sweet. Yes, the weave pattern looks it looks like a from far away, it looks almost like it, it looks like a brick wall, but when you get closer, it looks like more like a staircase, a stepping yep. staircase. Mm -hmm. And nah, bread and butter, Doug, you did a great job with the marketing, dude. The box, the unboxing. I should have recorded this one. Oh my gosh, it was just so. I can't believe you didn't. Funny. Yeah, I was just. I don't know. I was just like, whatever. I'm just gonna open these. It's whatever. Dude, if there's any company to record an <laughs> unboxing from, it would be them. <laughs> it would be Doug, but it's, it would be Doug. You're right. You're right. I messed up. I'm sorry, but. <laughs> It's all good. You guys, I don't want to spoil it for you. Basically, what you guys have to do is just go get it yourself and unbox it yourself because like the artwork and everything. And then also, <laughs> I posted it up on my story, but uh, the story, Takayaki or <laughs> Takayaki Tennis in the box. Did you see that? No. Oh I, my I haven't actually opened that box yet. I got sent two and I took the one that wasn't in the box. You should, you, you should definitely do the unboxing then. We'll leave that one for you. Got Anyways, it. Anyways. There is, I'm not going to spoil it too much, but when you open up that box, underneath that box, there is a story written in Japanese. You have to Google translate it and just go read it. It is so funny. It's All right. So I am glad you told me that. <laughs> uh, yeah. No, go do a reading. Actually, do a reading. And then when, when you, if you do the unboxing and you do the reading, you know, put on your best reading voice, you know, get the mic up and it's like story time. You know, hmm? you can be All the right. reading rainbow with Christopher Olsen. If you even know what the reading rainbow is. I have heard of it, but I don't know what it is. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. <laughs> Good. But yeah, totally dated Shogun, myself. if you guys were kind of on the fence, I think it's nice. I, I, to me, if I had to compare it to the filth, cause you know, if you yeah. use a bread yeah, and butter, yeah, yeah. that's what you would be using. It was like a less stiff filth, but still had pretty good power. So more powerful. I don't know. It powerful. felt Felt very balanced. If you're on the fence, I think it's nice. I'm definitely going to do a full review at some point. So Ooh. keep an eye out because I think I think they did something nice here. Okay. All right. Good job. All right. Moving on. Next is the Apollo. Yes. And I did hit the Apollo this weekend. I will say, let me tell tell me this. Was your Apollo as gritty as, was it the grittiest thing you've ever touched in your life? Like, I... Yes, yes, mine okay. was absurdly gritty. 
I was like, there's no way this passes. This was the most absurd. Like, I know we say it and we joke around like it's sandpaper, but this literally felt like, you know, sandpaper to me. Yeah. I, at this point, I'm like, quality control for grit is so bad that I'm like, like what do you, <laughs> I, part, okay, so I've, we've talked about this a little bit in the past, but the the spin test made a lot of sense when paddles had very different surfaces and raw carbon fiber wasn't the dominant face. You had like paint grit, you had smooth paddles, you had raw carbon fiber, you had other different ideas and so it made sense. It was like, oh, look at all these different surfaces. Now, the dominant idea is raw carbon fiber. And generally speaking, most of those are the same. So usually what changes is like the weave pattern. And there's small things. I'm oversimplifying here. But largely, it's how gritty or not gritty it is. And it's like when paddles are allowed to be illegal or way over the limit for some yeah. random units that get through and some that are under and then average, I'm like, what's the point? in doing this when it just it doesn't feel like there's nearly as much of a point as there used to be i'm still gonna do it because people want to know but i'm like there just isn't that much of a point when paddle consistency is so bad right it's almost harder for us to review them too because you don't know we don't know if we got a gritty one and maybe you don't get one a gritty one yep. right and how much that affects and i mean i know we always say like spin isn't everything um but i think at the very least the average like consumer and their experience of getting a paddle where one feels incredibly gritty and the one doesn't it's a tactile thing it's a customer consumer experience thing and if those yep. aren't the same you know you're going to be upset like what did i pay for right like yeah. i paid for the same thing i didn't get the same thing that's yep. annoying so totally yeah, and I this is not like a unique thing to spartus like obviously we've talked about it with yola basically if someone produces a raw carbon fiber paddle at some point it's probably going to happen to them. It's just yes. it's Even just though, how the industry works, at least with the raw carbon fiber paddles over sea. Um, so, yeah. But anyways, Apollo, I got to hit it more uh, this week because I was like, you know what? I liked it paddle. for my first game. Let me hit it some more. Dude, it... I feel like I, it's right I in your wheelhouse. A, what's that? I feel like it's a paddle that's kind of like in your wheelhouse. It's, it's very fast. Pretty gritty, wide body, good sweet spot, you know, uh, decently long handle. I, for whatever reason, it seems a lot wider than some other similar shape paddles like the Forza Mach 2. Um, I don't know what else has that shape. I guess like the Scorpius, I guess. It just feels a lot wider. So, I don't know. Interesting. Yeah, I I liked it a lot. Like, I, I really think, so I think it's $130 and then after a discount code, it's 117 Yeah. At 117 they're making a good paddle at that price does not take much to impress. And I feel like this is a paddle that a lot of other companies would easily sell for $200. Mm -hmm. And at 117, I'm like, this is just a no brainer. Like it's just a very good value paddle. It is like an all court, reasonably poppy for a wide body. It's more poppy than the Volaires. It's more poppy than like a hurricane pro. It's not as poppy as like the new Scorpius is. So it's like this nice middle ground. It's just, I don't know. There's, I could not find anything that I was like, I don't like, I don't like this about this paddle. Actually, I take that back. What? I think it looks really ugly. Yeah, I was going to say that the too. The shape, it looks like a pizza peel. <laughs> I think it's the pointy top. Like it's like curved, but there's, it, it ends in this like point where you can almost tell that it's a point and that I think that's the thing that bugs me the most. And something about the curves, like at the bottom just it doesn't look right the proportions i don't know just or angles just don't look right to me but yeah, yeah i guess you're saying yeah it's just not appealing even though it's kevlar you know you can't those usually typically look good with a black edge guard you know what i mean like those should look good but yeah you're right it doesn't look that appealing but it plays good it does no it plays amazing i think i'm trying to think of all the wide body paddles but of all the wide body performance paddles that exist right now it's for sure the best value of all of them yeah so Man. yeah it's really good highly on it that'll get a review at some point too i'm trying to put that on the calendar but i mean i don't even feel like i need to say much more than that that's just kind of what it is all court <laughs> long handle wide body amazing price it's there's your good. review guys all right yep you might as well just cut that portion of the pod and just you know 
get a new thumbnail and boom Slap stick it out on your on channel it. Exactly. there you go there you go there's your review you know in fact maybe i'll do that just for <laughs> for shits and with, giggles with my voice with your voice yeah <laughs> welcome perfect <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Okay. Uh, two two more things we got here. So next week, mm-hmm. th- your day has finally come. Will huh. I? Yes. I'm just at peace with this. Mm. I don't even care anymore. Yeah. You 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 got the thing. The <laughs> Willinator, the triple black diamond, mm. aka the elongated double black diamond, comes yeah. out next week, next Sunday. Mm-hmm. That's right. Yes. You sure you don't care anymore? You're not feeling some type of way, Chris? You know, you can tell. Nah, it's I'm, okay. I'm over it now. Now, now I'm in the phase. You know how you go like the seven stages of grief. Now I'm just in the stage <laughs> of, you know what? Acceptance? I'm happy for my friend. You're happy. Oh, okay, good, good. I'm glad. I'm glad. Uh, gosh, it, I'm still milking this. You know, when it actually releases, it's gonna be. Ooh, I don't know. I don't know how I'm gonna rub it in your face more. I don't. I don't think you'll be able to do it. But no? I've got. I've got a funny. I've got a funny way I'll get you back in my review. Don't you worry. Oh, really? You're reviewing it? Oh, man. Thanks, man. Shoot. This day just keeps on getting better and better. Shoot. You know, I got my own paddle. Chris is reviewing it. Shoot. I mean, <laughs> hey, just know that not everyone's happy when I review their paddles. <laughs> oh, yeah. Am I, are we Are we not going to be friends after this review? Just, just tell me now. <laughs> uh, just tell me. I'll start. I'll, I'll, I'll find another co-host job somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> So you better better get that resume ready. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. How many episodes is this episode? I've been this is eighty four. Yeah, episode eighty four with the Pickleball Studio podcast. I was the one who founded it, and then Chris took it over. It became it stole my my title as host. <laughs> speaking of which, speaking of which, wh- who who was the one who sent? Who made you that comment? Um, do you have that up? Let me see if I can find this. Which it comment? Was, there was a comment that you screenshotted to me, and it was like somebody said. Yo, Will Will wishes he was the host of the Pickleball Studio podcast. He's kind of oh, like Oh, it was Ski-Lo. an email. Oh, uh, it was an email? Yeah, it was something. Hold on, let me see if I can find it real quick. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Good. Yeah, I, so I'll just explain it while he hunts. But someone emailed me and wrote like a message about some paddles or something. And then at the end, they were basically like, Will wishes he was cool enough to yeah, be yeah. the host. I of found the- it. I found it. It said... Thank it is an email to Chris. Is an email. I'm reading it. Thank you again for your content. We all know that Will is not the host of the PB Studio. He wishes his anthem should be the song by Ski Lo. I wish I was a little bit taller. I wish I was a baller. And the rest of the song goes, "If I girl, if I had a girl who looked good, I would call her." And it says, "All in good fun." I love Will. I pre-ordered his ADV bag. Shout out to this guy, but yeah, shout out to this guy who responded to you and shout. That song is a classic. Chris, I don't know if you know that song. You're probably nope. no. I figured. Okay, it's all good. It's all good. It's okay. <laughs> I think it's so funny to me. Yeah. I have never had a friend, I that I can think of, where there's like this age gap where it's like, oh, you're too young to understand that. <laughs> <laughs> they, well, we're here now. We're here now. You're too young. But it's also <laughs> funny because I don't think of you as that much older than me. Okay. Well, tell me this. Have you had a moment? Can you? Because sometimes I'm like, oh, you're too young to understand. This. Do you ever have a moment where you're like, dang, Will, you're too old to understand this? Like, you know, you have some lingo or something. No. No, I actually haven't <laughs> had that yet. <laughs> oh gosh. Okay. <laughs> you're. 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 Both old and young at the same time, somehow. What can I say? I don't know. Shoot. Magic. It is what it is. Magic. That's right. <laughs> but anyways, so paddle releases next week, and there is, I was told, it's going to be a limited quantity release, and yes. potentially just a limited edition, and basically, if it comes back, will be entirely dependent on how popular it was or how much demand there is for it, so... If this is something you have really been looking forward to, I would mm-hmm. suggest that you figure out what time it is going to go live next Sunday and be ready to buy that immediately because at least mm-hmm. based on the Ruby releases in the past, which have sold out in like less than five or ten minutes every time they've come back, there's a good chance these are gone even sooner. So fair warning, get mm-hmm. ready a week in advance here because if you're really looking forward to it, it might not come back. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. You hear that, everybody? This is the best advertising I could have ever gotten for my own paddle. Just Chris telling you to go buy it if you really want it because it's going to sell out. It's amazing. Thank you, Chris. <sighs> you are a shill. 
whether you believe it or not. Hey, whoa, 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 <laughs> whoa. I'm just letting the people know what they might want to know. I, I got to hit this thing and we'll see if it's still good. We'll see. Uh, okay, okay. Well, we'll, we'll see, see. Yes, in your final review, I'll probably be doing some sort of little unboxing, um, which I did record that will be coming out earlier on in the week. I might say a little bit of the specs and stuff because um, real though, I don't want some of you guys, I don't know, anticipating this and like getting it and I don't know, it not being something that you want, right? And just fair warning, I would say this is an all court paddle, maybe leaning a little control, maybe depending on the ball you play with. So, but just don't expect it to be some crazy like power paddle that you guys have been seeing. So, not like a Yola, it's not a gearbox. Right, exactly. So just telling you guys there right now, like don't waste your time or waste your money on it. If that is, if, if a control paddle is something that you don't want, or that's just, I don't know if, if you don't want to support me or whatnot, because I would hate for you guys to just, I don't know, scramble to try and get it. If it is a limited release and it's something that you didn't like or something that you didn't ask for. And there you go. Look, I got to be the only person with a signature paddle who's telling you to potentially not buy my paddle because it may not be for you. So there's that. <laughs> okay. Just don't don't All right. anybody ever tell me I'm some crazy shill. <laughs> <laughs> Well, let's not get out of hand now. <laughs> it's just kidding. All right. Anyways, moving on. Last thing for news. Uh, I just started seeing. So ever since I've been talking about core crushing, and I even made a video about this recently, but I guess you know how you see on like the back of cans or like a billboard sign. Like, let's say it's a Twinkie. And on the billboard size, it says mm -hmm. not the actual size and you yes. go, you look at that and you go, wow, that means somebody was upset because they saw this and were mad that what they bought wasn't the same size as the billboard, oh right? Oh my gosh. Okay. That yep. I See feel like going. has been happening since I've been talking about core crushing. So I'm going to make this very clear for everyone. Rattling in your paddle is mm -hmm. not the same as core crushing. Rattling... Yes is very rarely a bad thing. Maybe, 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 maybe sometimes At worst, it it's could annoying. be, but I haven't really seen any. So if you can shake your paddle and it kind of sounds like a maraca, most of the time that's just loose glue. It's just yeah. glue shaking around in one of the cells. It doesn't affect anything. It's just making a sound. But now if you can take your thumbs and press mm -hmm. in the sweet spot or a bit above the sweet spot and it makes a crunching sound, that is core crushing or delamination and that is a very bad thing. Yes, that is still a bad thing. We've still decided that it's a bad thing, even though some people, some companies, like you said, I think that it, say, like, would you say it was like a feature or something when the core kind of squishes or crushes? That's, as far as I know, that's still a bad thing. Right, right. So yeah, just be aware. I just, I saw lots of posts on Facebook about people saying like, oh, my paddle's rattling and that means it's core crushed. And I was like, what? I was like, no, 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 no. Rattling is okay. Like, I mean, you don't want to hear rattling. Like, it's annoying. Yeah. But your paddle is not broken, per se. Yeah. If you press into it and you can squeeze it, or you can hear a little bit of crunching, which is the crunching of the core, or maybe the epoxy up against, I'm mean, not the epoxy, but the glue up against the core, then that is typically signs of core crushing. But just know that even if you don't hear the crunching noise when you press into it really hard, it could technically still be core crushed like yeah it's totally a possibility so just because it's not making that sound when you push it in doesn't mean that it's not core crushed yes it, it yeah. could come later on mm -hmm. um and I, you know it's interesting some people asked me they were like well am i not just breaking my paddle by pressing your thumbs into it and if your paddle is not broken no there's like no way just pressing your thumbs is going to break it because you're not there's no way you're pressing as hard as you are hitting an overhead and i actually took one of my anna lee paddles that i cut open and i'm like banging on it i'm like squishing it like i'm trying to like make mm -hmm. it crush and it will not crush so me you going like this kind of lightly on your paddle is not going to crush the core of your paddle if if it starts crunching it's because it was already broken or it was bound to break at some point. So I right. thought I'd clear that up too because people are kind of like, oh, don't press into it. And I'm like, no, 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 it's it's fine. It's fine. Yeah. All right, cool. Anything yeah. else you want to say about that? 
No, yeah. that's about it. I just saw it all over Facebook and was like, dang, okay, okay we got to... We'll Dude, see how, how many f- people actually see this part of the podcast, but I was like, dang, we got to talk about that. How do you find the time? I, I feel like you do a pretty good job of just, you know, going through all the socials and keeping up with all the news, like Facebook, Reddit, Twitter, Instagram. Like, how do you do it? I don't get it. I need to do less. In fact, I will be taking most social media off my phone this week because I think I could get a lot more done if I didn't. Of course, it'll still be important to check those things, but I probably don't need to check them at the frequency that I check them. That you do? Gotcha. Okay. Well, shoot. I don't know what else I can take away from my life. I really just do Instagram. Even that is not that much, and I still have a tough time keeping up with all the things. So, shoot. If you're having a tough time and you're here, dude, you're about... I don't know. There's no... There's no... There's no luck for me, is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> There's no hope for me. <laughs> we'll just get you a boss, Will. We'll just get you a boss. That's what you need. Uh, maybe, maybe. <laughs> All right, moving on to the primary topic. Balls are a mess in this sport. It used to be simple. Dura, Franklin. And wait, side note, before we start, I did, I didn't really play a game, but I played a few points with the library ball from, yeah. from Gamma. And it was yeah. actually... Yes, it was actually really fun. And you know, it's funny, I brought it and uh, one of my buddies, uh, Carlos, he was like, yo, is this is this the ball y'all were talking about? Because he, he's listening to the pod and he has no idea what we were talking about. So I yeah. brought it and we got to play with it and uh, just a few points. It was pretty funny. Like, yeah, you Isn't get some it abs- funny how it plays? Yes, it gets some absur- absurd amounts of spin. If you do backspin on it, that thing yes. dies. No, it, it's literally the, the ball will just stop and go backwards immediately. Yeah. I I think, I really hope that i don't know i th- i think some improvements can be made i mean as it is now is really fun but i think you can make it denser so that it it moves a little bit faster or more consistent i think you know you can tweak it a bit but definitely definitely fun i i think i'm going to bring it out more to play with more for sure what i would i have no idea if this would work i'm just coming up with a random idea here but i kind of wonder if you could almost take a ball but maybe it isn't as um, thick is the wrong word. It's like a slightly smaller ball than normal, but you encase it in the foam that the ball is made out of now. So you have the ball inside, but the foam uh, makes it a lot quieter. A but it's still kind of yes. pickleball. A regular pickleball encased in the foam yes. of the the gamma library ball okay i see what you're saying because then you might get closer to the true feel of the ball because you know right now like again if you were playing real pickleball it would feel like a pretty different game with the gamma ball and that's why i think it's probably only super useful for certain drills but i think you could i hope they continue to innovate Innovate. on it because i kind of feel like there's some potential there yeah if not it's just something kind of fun and different and yeah it's not so different from like playing a game with all um, paddle trainers or something. You know, yep. you're just introducing something different. So yeah, if I don't know, if you're bored with your your regular pickleball game, try playing with this gamma library ball, or playing with some paddle trainers. I think it just makes pickleball kind of just like lighthearted and and fun again. Here, yeah. here's what I will say. So I the gamma ball. The Franklin trainers and playing left-handed are all things Combine all three. that <laughs> whenever I've done them, it just reminds me of like the joy of when you first discover pickleball. Yeah. And it is so enjoyable and so much fun with people that it kind of just like spins my brain backwards a bit. And you're like, I need more of this. Like, this is what this is supposed to be. Like, yeah. this is why I liked this in the first place. Mm-hmm. And I feel like for how cheap, buying like a pack of three or six of these gamma balls are like you'll probably have a great time with your friends and laugh and like to me that's worth like 20 bucks you know for sure uh definitely and i i mean yeah try like maybe we should have maybe this will be a future episode we should just come up with all these different rule sets and just share experiences with them like the time i played um pickleball with with tennis rules (laughs) <laughs> like yep. even tennis scoring just overheads no kitchen you know that was something interesting and fun and actually that would actually be kind of fun to do with this library the gamma ball the gamma ball now that i think about it because you can serve overhead and it's not nearly as like fast and feel potentially as dangerous i guess you could say Yeah, when you're run charging the net and someone's blasting a forehand blasting. at you exactly so i don't know that might be the next thing i try so 
Okay. No, I would like for this. sure. I like so, I, you guys should totally try stuff like that. Like it's, I don't know. I I think because particularly for you and me, because mm-hmm. this is our job, I think pickleball becomes a slightly different. It's still super fun. I still love it, obviously. Yeah. But when it is your primary way of working. It's just mm-hmm. a little bit different. So doing those things to kind of just remind you like, yeah, ah, yeah. Exactly. It's a little more stimulating. You get a little more stimulation and it's, yeah, it's just a little different. So yeah, if you yeah. guys out there are bored with your regular pickleball game, try one of these new ways to play. <laughs> yeah. All right. Anyways, so back to the main topic. I just wanted to talk about this kind of briefly. So mm-hmm. I remember last year. The divide was always Dura or Franklin. Which group mm-hmm. were you in? Largely amateur rec play was Franklin. And then the tournament scene, you were always using a Dura. And it was like people would complain, oh, I don't want to use a Franklin or oh, I don't want to use a Dura. And it was annoying, right? Well, it's so much more annoying now than it ever has been. Because now <laughs> you have the Franklin. You still kind of have the Dura. You have the Pro S1. You have the Diadem Ball. You have the Vulcan Ball. Occasionally, you could throw a gamma chuck ball in there. Like, there's so many different balls, and pretty much every ball I just listed, except the chuck ball, are legitimately balls that different friend groups use. So, I have just stopped caring. Like, as long as you show up with one of those balls, I don't care what we're playing with anymore because it's just not worth it to yeah. argue over. Yeah, I don't, I don't care either. Unless, um, and I don't argue with it or, or have a selection unless I know someone has a tournament coming up and they're playing with a certain ball. I'm like, yes. okay, let's play with that ball for yep, them. Yeah, totally, same. Um, I will say, though, that depending on what ball we play with and depending on what paddles I have in my bag, I know not everybody has the luxury of this, I will switch sometimes to a different paddle. Like, Based on the ball? That ball? Based on the ball. I'm like, oh, this is a softer ball? Oh, I can play with this one. It hits a little bit harder. Or this is a faster ball. Maybe I'll pick something softer. Or it just kind of depends on, on me. Or But also... This does, I will say this does make it a little bit more annoying to take notes on my reviews for paddles because I'm like, okay, yes. I hit with this yesterday and I hit with this today and I'm hitting with a different ball. Yep. Are my, is my experience consistent, you know? Yep. And I yep. try to remember what ball I hit with. And then when I'm comparing, if I'm doing comparison between two different paddles or multiple different paddles and they're all using different balls, nightmare, absolute nightmare nightmare (laughs) i when i go out and i drill or if i know i'm like working on a specific paddle review i try and use the actually i'll throw this in the mix no one uses this ball except me but i try and use the yola ball or the dura because that's what i have the most experience on in terms of reviewing paddles with since last year it was largely duras and the yola is pretty similar to the yeah to the dura so it goes out around super fast yeah, I haven't really noticed that, but honestly, I have. There's quite a few of those Yola balls, so maybe I just. I, I'm probably not paying. At this point, the Vulcan ball set the bar so low that I just don't. <laughs> I like don't even care anymore. I'm like, this is just, this is just part of the game. It's stupid, but it's just part of the game. Do you like any one of these balls like s- substantially more than the others? Franklin. Prefer, you Never thought Franklin, I'd say that. You prefer the Franklin the most probably because it doesn't it doesn't like go out around on me and they i mean they'll they crack but doesn't yeah. crack that often and with all these new power paddles just being ridiculous it feel like it slows it down a lot compared to the dura so i'm like sure now that doesn't feel as bad to play against you know interesting okay i think uh if i would probably be tied in second place i think my first one now is i actually really like the the diadem ball a lot. Diadem ball is good. Yeah. So the diadem ball and then in second would be my preferred would be like Pro S1 in the Franklin. Either or. I really kind of don't care. And then third place would be like Gearbox and Dura. Like those are tied like for third for me. The Dura, the thing that I will give the Dura or the Yola ball is if I can use those effectively, anything else is easier than that True. ball. So that's another reason that I, I don't mind drilling with those and whatnot is because it's like, okay, well, it, it if I went from a Franklin to a harder ball, the game now oh. suddenly feels more difficult, whereas vice versa, it only gets easier. Mm, makes sense. Makes sense. Okay. But yeah. I just kind of hate that it's this is all the over it is. the place more than it ever has been. And that's, again, why I've just stopped. I've just stopped caring because I'm like, I don't yeah. have the... I don't have the mental capacity to sit here and argue about what ball we're using. I'm like, if that's yeah. the ball you want to use, 
Sure. As long as it's not an Onyx Fuse, let's go for it. (laughs) Okay. Well, some other people don't have the same opinions as you. Did you hear about the fans that were booing the Vulcan Ball at MLP? I saw the memes of Pickleball clip. It was so funny. (laughs) There was one point, the ball, like it's a dink, and the ball literally just doesn't come up. Like it's so obvious that it just died and they whiffed. The very next point, literally the same exact thing happens and fans just start booing. (laughs) And I'm like, this... Here's what is so funny about the Vulcan ball to me. This ball comes out. You've got all these pros, obviously contracted by PPA, so they're going to say whatever the heck the PPA wants them to say. They're saying they're the best ball ever. Yeah, best ball ever. It's so good. It doesn't go out of round. I love how it plays, blah, 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 blah. And then, obviously, the ball sucks. It's very obvious watching the anger from a lot of these pros that they're not happy with the ball. It goes out around. It's annoying. But everyone's saying, man, Vulcan's a genius for making this ball. Every time I heard one of these, I was just like, this is so stupid. I was like, this ball is not good. And it's just like, again, I'll use it if someone else brings it. But I'm not spending $5 a ball for that stupid thing. Is it still that expensive? There was a period, I don't know if it still is, I think they were trying to clear out all the old inventory of the old batch. Uh I don't know when the new one's coming, but they, like, the price dropped dramatically on those balls because I think they just knew they had to get rid of them. Yeah. So I'm sure people bought them, but I don't know if they're still on sale or not. Okay, okay. So we don't know what the new balls are like just nope. yet we haven't played no one has talked about them said anything and about vulcan them. better pray that this mlp was not using that ball because that's a really bad look for that new ball oh gosh no 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 they're definitely not using that fall right because I, I feel like if they were they would have maybe they would have advertised it well i don't know i'm like after if what you happened are vulcan, they probably do you pulled that actually want to advertise it <laughs> And because it's like that kind of admits tested. like hey we messed up personally i think that would be better like hey guys you know what we actually did kind of mess this up but we made it better and we can like prove it's better now i think that would be better but i don't know if a company wants to admit they made a mistake true you're right all right well, well i guess we're gonna have to wait and see you know yeah. i still have not seen that many vulcan balls out in the actually I, no <laughs> even even people here who play ppas like, I don't see, like, I know one guy that will only use a Vulcan ball. And other than that, I'm like, yeah, I'm not bringing it. <laughs> All right. Well, Whatever. Not, yeah. not for me. Balls are a mess in this sport, and hopefully it unifies more at some point. But yep. it's where quick, we are right now. S- speaking of MLP, did you watch any of the MLP or nah? I didn't. I caught highlights from this, and I caught a little bit of news here and there, but I did not watch, like, a full match. I was super busy this weekend. No, uh, well, kind of same here, but also, I don't know. I just, I really just didn't have interest in watching it. I did hear from some people they had some good matches, but I don't know with the format and, you know, you don't win the tournament, you know, you're not following. So there's no winner after this event. I was less invested in it. So it just felt like a regular, I don't know, a regular season game. And I guess maybe when something with, more stakes on the line, you know? Yeah. Is up for grabs, more points, or I don't know, something's up for grabs. It'll be more interesting to watch. But I don't know. I didn't really watch much of it either. Let us know in the comments below if you guys watched it and if it was enjoyable or not. Is it still MLP? You know, there's so many changes with MLP. Yeah. I just don't know what the vibe is like now. No no pun intended there. <laughs> vibe. Just, That's funny. <laughs> just let us know how it is. Is it worth watching? Are the matches good? Is the new format good? What are they playing up to? 25 now? No 25. freeze? Right? No freeze. Still have to win by two. Dream yep. Breakers are still win by, or still the 21 instead. Yep. Yep. And yeah, let us know if it's still a good product or who else, you know, is yeah. good to watch. I did, I did want to watch some this weekend, but I was, I was playing for work and then today is Mother's Day and then... yeah. Uh, Friday, I can't remember exactly what I was doing. I think I just had a lot of work that I was wrapping up um, and I think quite a bit of playing or something. But anyways, I just didn't really have time to sit down. And when I did sit down to like watch it a little bit because I don't know all the team layouts like I have in the past, I was just a little less invested in like, right. oh, who's on what team? Like I, I kind of know some of them, but not entirely. Exactly. No, same here. It's Mother's Day, uh, Mother's Day weekend, you know, super busy. 
testing out paddles and my honestly my time was invested in watching i guess nba playoffs that's <laughs> like that's what was happening with me oh dude side note i think i told you this but i think it's really funny that in the western conference like the top three seeded teams in the nba in the playoffs is the minnesota timberwolves okc thunder and the reigning champs, the Denver Nuggets. And coincidentally, those three teams are in our respective, like, <laughs> towns and cities. Right, exactly. I just thought that was so funny. Like, you know, is that a coincidence? Funny. I, I don't know. Minnesota to go out on top. Uh, I don't know. You guys, dude, I don't even want to get into it, but you guys have a good team, and you have one of the hottest, like, rising stars in the NBA. He's Everybody's saying he's the second coming of Michael Jordan. He even looks like him which is kind of I'll, crazy. The stuff he's doing is kind of nuts. I don't follow yes. basketball at all, but I'll take it. <laughs> yeah, I figured. I was like, do you even know what basketball, do you even know who Michael Jordan is? Okay, just, just now, making sure. come on. Come <laughs> just on. making sure. <laughs> no, Jeez, I, Louise. If you said you didn't know, I wouldn't put it past you, that's all I'm saying. I mean, that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> okay, okay. But yeah, that is that is pretty funny. <laughs> all right, that's it. All now, right. you've the reached the kitchen yes um you got something to uh follow up with in the kitchen yeah go ahead so I, we don't have a lot uh this week um but i just had a few things i want to follow up with so last week i talked about stretching i'm continuing to stretch but a lot of people were like hey you should post your stretching routine and i don't really have a full routine right now first it started with i worked on my hamstrings and then i was like my hip flexors need work and then now this week, I also added in my wrists. Actually, I want to see this, Will. Take, yeah. Make a fist with like your right hand like this. Okay. And then just curl your wrist like in. How far can you go? Like, Gosh dang it, it, you can do it too. So yes. I'll hold it up for the camera and see if you can see it on here, Will. But yeah. mine only goes to here. I can't go any further. Dang. Like, but everyone that I have asked about this, their wrist, like I'm going to open my hand because it's the only way I can do it. They can all go 90 degrees 90 degree. in a fist. But like, this is as far as my fingers will go. Like, I can't go any further than this and maintain this. So Yeah, that's not good. The, the only reason this even came up and why I wanted to work on this is I was thinking about my counters. So I posted a video this week taking a lesson from Amrik about Amrik. how to counter the ball better. And one of the things I noticed was like, it's really hard for me to keep my wrist locked and push through the ball. And so I was like, I wonder if my wrist mobility is just really bad. And I realized it was. So I was like, yeah. oh, I need to work on that. Anyways. Is so, that is that the thing ahead. that Amrik pointed out? Is, it, is that the reason why James Ignatowicz and Kwang Duong commented on that video? Because they both commented on that video, right? Which I thought <laughs> they, was absolutely hilarious. I was like, whoa. <laughs> did you see my response to James? No. What? Okay. What did James so, say? And James then what did commented you and he said... He said something. This is James Ignatowicz, by the way, people. <laughs> yeah, I'm paraphrasing this, but he said something to the effect of if Omrick can actually make good, or if Omrick can actually make Chris good at countering the ball, I will make him my head coach for all of my <laughs> clinics and I will be the assistant. <laughs> and then I commented back and said, I need to know how long the time frame is because I'll stop reviewing paddles for six months to make this happen. <laughs> <laughs> and then Kwang Dong said something also like, Something about like his dad and like these videos are like good to learn from or something. I just James doesn't surprise me. James I banter with like a decent amount or will text sometimes. So I wasn't mm -hmm. surprised to see him, but I was surprised that Kwang Dong commented on the video. That's hilarious. You uh shoot, you got the pros commenting on your videos. You a real celebrity, Chris. That's all you need to know. Everybody, <laughs> I think they were, they were probably there for now. Omric and less yeah. so me. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so after that video, I was just kinda like, man. I feel like my wrist uh, could use some work. So I added that in. But anyways, all that to say, guys, I don't mm -hmm. really have a routine yet. I'm kind of just adding things as I need them. But I've been getting a lot of my information from a YouTube channel called Movement by David. He does a lot of YouTube shorts. He doesn't do a ton of long form videos, but he has lots of really good information in there. I've like learned quite a bit about stretching from just watching those shorts. So if you guys are wanting to follow anything, just go check out his channel. I feel like there's a lot of good uh, information on there, and that's probably where I've okay. gotten 80% of my information about stretching so far. All right, that's good. Well, now that your mobility is better, your counters are better, you just seem to be improving a lot. What do you think our chances of taking a game, a rematch against Omrik and Onik are? 
uh, like us getting a game off of them. Yeah, I mean, we played them last time. Zero. Are you sure that's just not you not being able to stretch out your hand? Come on, let's let's work on the mobility just a little bit. I know you really wanted to put a one up there. You know that finger was just. Just Here, get that. Here's the thing, up. dude. I I play with Omric. Pro, at, almost once a week at this point. After uh-huh. League on Wednesday, he's there. Sometimes we'll play some rec games after. Omric has another level that I even rarely get to see. And when he is at that level, the, I, you and I stand zero chance. I need to see this level. We need to at least bring it out of him. I need to see it. Unless something's actually on the line, I just don't think you can bring it out of him. Like I think mm. it has to be like a pro match. Hmm. But Maybe yeah, we sponsor, we would get put some money on the line. Let's let's go. I need I need that rematch again. At least now with the you know new and improved Chris. Because last time we played them, which you guys, if you guys want to watch, you can go watch it. It's on it's on my channel. Um, me and Chris go play Onik and Omric, and yeah, we got dusted. It was it was pretty bad. I think there were some points where Chris just gave up. He just like turned around and just didn't even try. I'm like, what, well, Chris? Where, what happened? Where are you? Where are you? <laughs> <laughs> when you see Omric trying with an alpha paddle. You don't want to be on that court. Oh, I actually really want to see Omrick with an alpha power. I want to see how crazy that drive is. I it's really stupid. Do. It's oh, disgusting. Man. All right, next time I'm back in Minnesota, we got we got to make this happen. I need, I need to see the drive at least. I need to see. The Dude, drive. Oh, actually, you know what? One other thing we should uh, talk about just really quick. Uh, yeah. So last minute, oh, yeah, you, yeah, me, yeah. John, Braden, all decided to go to Avengers, the Texas Assemble. PPA. Yeah, yeah. I'm glad you guys came up. I was like, oh man, I. I didn't, Here's the thing. I wasn't even sure if I was going to go, but I was like, man, it's Texas. It's like easy for me. I got, you know, more peeps down there now. I've been going out to Texas a bit to just like hang out and have fun. So now that you guys are coming, this is awesome. Can't wait no, to see you guys. No, but it's so funny how all of this happened because uh-huh. I was, I heard about this tournament. I had been asked by several people, are you going to come to it? And I was like, no, I have too much work. I, I'm not going to go. Then I already knew you were going. And then in our group chat, I don't know if it was, I think it was John Braden. who asked oh, for no, John. Braden. It was John. Yeah, okay, so John was like, hey, Will, are you going? And you were like, yeah. And then John was like, oh, cool, I might go. And then Brayden's like, oh, well, if John's going, I should go. And then I was like, there's no way if all three of you are going that I'm not going to go. So yeah, I was like, I guess I'm going. I knew it was, as soon as Brayden chimed into the chat, I was like, oh, here he comes, Mr. 355 best. And sinker. Yeah, he's like, oh, he's coming. There's no way he's saying no to this. He loves us too much. But God. you know what? Instead, this time... It's yeah. not you and me playing together. Yeah, thank God. Yeah. It's yeah. me and Brayden in 5 0. Oh, God bless Brayden's heart. Good luck, Brayden. <laughs> only, only because you just said that. Now I hope we play you and Mo first round, and I hope we rock you guys. Okay. That's definitely not going to happen. I know how you play. I've seen I, all the videos. I've seen what Omri's done with you. It's okay. okay. I know give you inside me, and Give out. me your actual, actual assessment here. Me and Brayden, let's say yeah. this matchup actually happens. Yeah, 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 yeah. What uh-huh. do you think the split would actually be for games? <laughs> okay, let me see. I got to think. Because I don't know Mo. You do. Yes. And you obviously know yep. me. Like, you know, mm-hmm. yeah, you know everyone. Yes, yes. And for, for those of you guys who don't know, Mo is a buddy of mine here in Tulsa. He's the owner of Lukey Grips. Um, go check out his grips. Love that guy. And he asked me to play in this. And what I know about Mo, oh, we're man, all playing five zero, correct? Yeah, we're we're all playing five zero. We're all playing five zero, nineteen plus. Oh man, I think, I think we split, we split game, we split sets, and then a third set. Really, realistically, it all depends on if I get th- three five, three zero Mo. <laughs> during that game because he can be inconsistent but when he's playing high oh man i just i just don't know man i think you guys would probably but how i'm not gonna lie how like the point differential no like how low is his low and how high is his high is the gap that big the gap is that big dude when you wow (laughs) when you see him it'll gosh it's like he'll you know you know sometimes you hit like a good shot and like it just clips the top of the tape you yeah. know what I mean? okay you know what that's fine like it was actually a good shot i just got unlucky or just a little bit more margin or whatever that happens on mo's worst that happens to mo but it happens to mo so much you think like he's doing it on purpose i'm like are you doing that on purpose dude like you're hitting that spot so well 
the top of the tape so well. You must be trying to just to clip the tape and have it roll over. He's like, no, dude, I don't know what's going on. I just can't get the ball over. Oh. And he's Does just he like, normally play 5-0? What does he play? No. Well, he's been recently playing 5-0, and he did uh, take a local 5-0 tournament in OKC like a month ago. He got gold? Yeah. Oh, sick. Congrats yeah. to him. So, but also at the same time, like I know a lot of the 5 players and higher level players in Oklahoma, they were at another, I think it was like at a PPA or something at the time. So I'm like, yeah. sure. But, ah. Uh, so clearly, we'll clearly it would you, be a close match. It would be a very close match. I think on like most given days, I would probably, if you guys were playing smart and at least just playing consistent, knowing what I know about you guys, you guys would probably take it you know Um, what it would honestly be because we you and i have never experienced it it would be really weird to play you in a competitive like a truly truly competitive competitive environment yeah you're right i think that would actually be pretty yeah pretty interesting like i feel like i wouldn't know like so my body would or my mind would obviously be like okay this is a real match like we're being competitive but at the same time i feel like i feel like if you hit me with some dumb shot (laughs) I would not be able to not laugh about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And me knowing what I know about you and knowing what I know about being in a competitive setting, there's no way I wouldn't try a bunch of dumb stuff on you. There's just no way. <laughs> so I can say, remember at that one PPA or APP <laughs> event, I hit that shot at you for the winner. Like, there's no way. Like, the, the opportunities to, like, relive that moment and talk about that moment again, especially on the pod, is just too great. There's just no way I wouldn't try to succeed at something crazy. So, I yeah. hope we see you in the gold medal match. That would yeah. truly, that would be, that would make for such a good video. Oh, yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. This is how me and Chris like ended the Pickleball Studio podcast. This is the date and the time <laughs> and the exact moment. Yeah. Uh, Love it. No, basically, what will happen is whoever, like, if Braden wins with me, that means he's the new co host. But if you guys win, <laughs> it means you're the host and Mo's the co host. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, that's good. Uh, that's funny. So, anyways, yeah, we will be at the Texas PPA at the end of May. Come say so what's up. Be there. Yeah, come, come say, say what's up. up to to me, to John, to Braden, and to Chris, dude. Yeah, yeah. all four of us. You get to see yeah. all four of us. Maybe you'll get some games in with us. Maybe. Should be fun. Looking forward to it. Um, but anyways, last thing I want to talk about in the kitchen is, I I was drilling my speed ups, uh, or not my speed ups, but my counters with a friend this week and. One thing I was just thinking about with drilling and maybe people do this all the time and I've just never done it, but oftentimes in drilling, it's, it's not that it's not cooperative, but it's like, you know, a lot of times it's, you're really pushing yourself and like, you know, maybe you're hitting shots. Like if you're doing like mid court resets, you're going to have the person hit very hard shots at you to like, if you can handle that, you can handle whatever in a game. Right. One thing I was just thinking about with my counters this week is I was like, okay, I just told my friend, I was like, I need you to hit anywhere from my left hip to my right shoulder or left shoulder and anything at my chest. All I want is to specifically practice this backhand counter. Like, I don't care Mm -hmm. about my forehand right now. I just need to get the motion proper on this. So it was like, you don't need to hit the ball a perfect speed up. I don't want you to like crank it super hard. I just need some rhythm learning this motion yeah and in the past i would have just said aim wherever you want and i'm just gonna counter the ball but i felt like i got way more reps on what i actually wanted doing it this way oh that's good yeah you didn't have a tough time finding somebody to do that with you no because well it worked perfect because she really needs to work on her speed ups so Mm. it it was very mutually beneficial beneficial. sometimes you know it it may not always be but it, also the way I think about it, if I'm going to do, if I'm going to ask someone to do something like this for me, when we were drilling, I said, here's what I want to do. Is there anything you specifically want to do? And if that means I was going to have to feed some balls, I would have gladly done it because the person did it for me, essentially. Okay. All right. I like that. <laughs> yeah. I need to so do just that to, you know, if you're ever going to drill with someone, just something to consider. I even heard Ben talk about it when he was practicing a two-handed backhand. It was like, aim at these two spots. Later, we can add more which is what we did. Eventually we said, okay, everything is free reign now, but I just want to isolate this for like 10 minutes so I can get lots of reps really quick. Cause in a game, you you might get like three balls in the spot you actually want to hit. Yeah, 
that makes sense yeah oh, good so. stuff good stuff good tips right there all right yeah. um anything else you want to add no that's <laughs> everything i got anything for you no man that's it and i felt like we went longer than we had anticipated like we normally do uh yeah i'm gonna guess we hit probably roughly the hour mark the news section took a lot longer than i thought it was going to yeah Yep. This happens to us every time. Every literally every single time I say this podcast is not going to be that be long. Quick, yeah, we have nothing to talk about. Here we go. I just got to stop just... saying that. It's literally never true. We should count how many times. Actually, no, you should say it just to to see as a challenge to see if we can actually get through a podcast kind of quick. You know, it'll never happen. It'll never happen. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. All right. Well, that's it, guys. We'll catch yep. you guys next week. Peace. Later.